Let us consider characteristics of sinusoidal function, which is f of x equals to sin x. Now we'll consider characteristics like period of the function, maximum value, minimum value, amplitude axis, domain range, x intercepts, and symmetry. Well, some of you who know about it can pause the video, sketch the function, write down the characteristics, and then look into my video. Well, f of x equals to sin of x is a periodic function. Since it repeats after an interval and the time period for the sine function is either 360 degrees, so all these are in degrees, or in radians you can say 2 pi. So we can write period of the function is 360 degrees or 2 pi, right? So 2 pi is in radians. Maximum value of sine x is plus 1, minimum value is minus 1, correct? So that means that is the maximum for the function, which is plus 1, and the minimum is minus 1. Now when is it plus 1, when is it minus 1? Well, for sine of x, it is plus 1 for 90 degrees, right? And minus 1 for 270 degrees. And it is 0 for 0 and 180 degrees and 360 degrees. Okay, now how do you get these values? One way, of course, is that you can use the calculator, right? And then put it in degrees or in radius, get your answer. Well, in degrees, I have written 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270, and 360 degrees. If you have to write radians, you know, this will be 2 pi, half of 2 pi is pi half of pi is pi by 2 and this is 3 pi by 2 correct to get the answers now to draw sine x you can at times use these concepts that is 1 if you have a coordinate system then you know sine is positive in these two coordinates and is negative in these two that means coordinate 1 and 2 sine is positive so some of you who use all silver teacup, all are positive, silver means sine, teacup or cast rule. So we'll write cast rule here, C-A-S-T, which is normally used in North America, so we'll use cast rule. So sine is positive in quadrant 2 and all are positive in quadrant 1. So when we say quadrant 1 and 2, that means in degrees it translates to from 0 to 180. So in the first half sine is positive and then later half sine is negative. Now that's one thing. Second, uh, those special triangles help you to find sine values. These triangles are 45 degrees and 30, 60, 90, correct? So if it is 45 degrees or in radians we can write pi by 4 either way so if these sides are 1 and 1, the hypotenuse square root 2. But if it is 60 degrees, 90 degrees and 30 degrees, in that case, let's consider the equilateral triangle with sides of length 2. Half that would be 1 and this is 2 square minus 1 square which is square root of 3. So that gives you values of sine theta, right? And you know what is sine? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, right? So we know sine x equals to opposite over hypotenuse. So all these things kind of review for you to understand sine function. And once you know all this, you can always plot the graph, right? So let me just sketch a rough rough graph. So sine function looks like this. That's the sine sort of wave. So it increases from 0 to 90, then drops down to 0 at 180 degrees, right? So these are all in degrees. And then it goes negative and then rises. Now this graph is repeated. This is a periodic function and repeats after every 2 pi or 360 degrees. It's a periodic wave. Now, when does it have maximum value? Maximum value is at 90, right? So we can say maximum value is plus 1, of course, at x equals to 90 degrees plus 2 pi right so every 2 pi so we can write 2 n pi do you see that 
90 degrees plus 2n pi, right? So, repeating after every pi. So, where n is belongs to natural numbers. Well, I could write n as integers because it could go negative also. So, n belongs to integers. Now, when does it have negative values? So, negative values are at 270, right? So, we can write x equals to 270 degrees plus it repeats after 2n pi, right? So 2n pi, so where n belongs to integers, which you can write as i or as z, right? Both are integers. Now, amplitude of the function is from the x's to maximum. So, the amplitude is 1 axis is y equals to 0. So this is the axis, which is y equals to 0. Domain is all real numbers. So x belongs to real numbers. Range is y belongs to real numbers, where y value is from minus 1 to plus 1. So it's from minus 1 to plus 1. x intercepts. As you can see, the x intercepts are at 0, 180, 360, right? So basically, it is in terms of pi, if I write this as 2 pi and this is pi, so we, we can say n pi in radians, right? Or in degrees, we can say this is 180 times n, right? So we can say x intercepts are at n times 180 degrees, right? or we can say n pi, right? where n belongs to integers. As far as symmetry is concerned, it is symmetric about origin, so it's odd symmetry. Now, how do you know it is odd symmetry? What is f of minus x? f of minus x is sine of minus x. Now, sine of minus x is minus sine x which is minus f of x because sin x is fx, right? So it has odd symmetry, right? So that helps us to understand the basics about the characteristics of sinusoidal function. Now as an exercise, what you can do is you can write the interval of increasing and the interval of decreasing and a general term in general terms for sinusoidal functions. So that could be a good question for you. So the question is interval of increasing and decreasing. So as you know, from minimum to maximum it is increasing and from maximum to minimum it is decreasing. So that becomes a question for you to answer. I hope that is interesting and useful for you. Thank you and all the best.